it's great to see all our canvases back. It's nice and almost packed this morning. Um, our speaker today will be Pastor Ricardo, and I pray that you all will be blessed by today's message. He will give us the opening and the closing prayer. Good morning, everyone. It's a blessing to be with you, and I have had the privilege of meeting with some, uh, meeting, I believe, most of everyone, and I have also had the joy of learning uh, your names, a little bit of your stories, so it's been a real pleasure um, getting to know each one of you. Well, we bow our heads and ask God to guide us as we open his word. Father God, what, what a privilege to be alive this morning. Thank you so much because you have purposes for each one of us. If we are here, it's because you have a special purpose and plan for each one of our lives. You have been guiding us. You have been shaping us. And today as we study the life of Abraham, the way you call him and the way you guided him, I pray that you will speak to each one of us, that we will sense that in the same way, that you interacted and called Abraham, you have a purpose and a calling for each one of us. May your Holy Spirit be here with us. May your holy angels be here with us. We pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. It's been a, a pleasure already, really, uh, spending time here at Heartland and meeting people from all over. Um, I even had the, the joy of, of meeting people from my own country today. You know, like there are people from everywhere, and Brazil, and then people whose parents are coming from Haiti, and then as far as Vermont, you know. <laughs> And then uh, Romania, of course, and people who are coming from many different places in Africa, many places in Europe. Uh, I think Gabriel, no, Gabriel, who was leading songs today, comes all the way from Belgium. And then uh, Clay and our friend, also from the Karen people, not so beautiful people from all over. Brazil is here, of course, you know, so many different locations, South Korea and Taiwan are some of the places that I can remember. So it is beautiful to see that in such a small group of people, already there are so many countries represented, and that's very beautiful to see that. You know, you have a privilege. I was reading recently um, about a very, very expensive school um, in, in Europe, and one of the things that they advertise is the fact that people in that school come from different countries around the world. And the purpose of that is so that people learn how to interact, how to interact with each other. And here, you know, in Virginia, Heartland, you have that opportunity. You have so many different countries to interact and learn about different cultures and how to share Christ in a way that is relevant for people from all over, and that's an amazing privilege. This morning, I want to spend some time with you uh, thinking about something that the Bible emphasizes, and I want probably to frame that to tell you a little story. Just imagine that you are uh, in a home, uh, you're a guest there, let's say, and then all of a sudden, uh, you hear this big, huge noise in the kitchen, and then it sounds like glasses are breaking one after the other. You know, like a huge noise. And then, as a guest in the house, you see how the father of the house interacts with that happening, okay? So I want you to help me think a little bit. What do you think is the response of the father? When he hears this crashing noise in the kitchen, glasses breaking, and you know that the person in the only person in the kitchen is a teenager. All right? So, what is the reaction of the father? A. Very upset. 
And he's going to go into the kitchen and say, why did you do You have to see how you clean that. Second, concern. Third, concern, and you are going to go there and try to do something about it and see how your teenage uh, you know, son is, is doing. What do you think is that reaction? Huh? A? a? Okay, it's like, I've said, okay, A, B, and C. I've heard everything here, so it's a multiple choice. All right, let me tell you this and, and why this is important. The reality is that we live in a world where things came crashing down. All right? When things were very, very wrong. And, and the key is this. That the world has exactly what is happening here, different responses to what they think God is going to do about the mess. Okay? And our perception of God marks the different ways in which we think God is going to react. So is God going to say, oh, okay, you created this mess, you see how you do with that? Or is God going to say, hey, I'm going to come down. And I'm going to deal with that. And you know what? You are my son. You are my daughter. And I'm going to take care of you in the midst of the mess. This is very important. I'll tell you why. Genesis uh, starts with a perfect world. Okay? And with amazing plans that God has for humanity. And in Genesis 1, you find that the purpose of God is to bless Adam and Eve and through them... To be a blessing for the whole creation, for the whole world. But very early into the story of creation, we have chapter 3. Is that right? And in chapter 3, what happens? Yeah, the fall, sin, and the big mess starts. What God intended as something beautiful where humans would interact with Him, would love to talk to Him, would love to be with Him, what happened? Adam. Where are you? And all of a sudden, what, what God intended to be a beautiful friendship, you know, and, and the looks of love and all of that, what happens? We were afraid. But what happened? We were afraid because we were naked. Exactly, sin. You see, sin is horrible. Because the first thing it does is that it destroys your relationship with God. The second thing it does is it destroys relationships with each other. And ultimately, it destroys the way you view yourself. And this is the issue. I want, I want you to think about this, okay, very carefully. Because that is what God wants to fix. And then we have, if you continue in the story of Genesis, you have Noah. And if you study very carefully those chapters, you realize that the story of Noah is a new creation. It's a new beginning. God wants to start again, everything. Let's restore relationship. I want to bless you. I want you to go and be a blessing. But very early in the story of Noah, what happens? Yeah? A mess again, you know? Drunkenness. His son uncovers his, you know... Nakedness, and then again, a mess. And the beautiful thing that I want you to start thinking about this morning is the following. God never gives up on us. God never gives up on humans. And then we advance, you know, and God says, hey, you have to go, you have to spread, you have to go into everywhere, and you have to be a blessing to the world. You go to chapter 11 of Genesis, and what do you find? Exactly, that people were comfortable in one place. And hey, this is nice. I'm not moving from here, man. This is great. Yeah? And we are going to make a city that will go to heaven and nobody and nothing will stop us. Really? And then, in chapter 11, we find what? That God, as a gift to humanity, has to confuse what? Languages. And today we have the blessing, the blessing of that. And I say, yo, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And then you have all the other blessings, hola, buenos dias, you know. And all the other things, yeah. 
That was a blessing. But God is a God who is never giving up on us. And the blessing that we find in chapter 12 of Genesis, the story of Abraham, is that. It's a reset pin. It's a starting again. And why is that so important for me? And I'll tell you this. If I were to hear each one of your stories, I'm 100% sure that you, were, you are going to tell me why God brought you here. And you're going to tell me how God brought you from wherever you were in your walk with him to this point. Because for many of you, starting here is a reset. It's a reset. And God has amazing dreams for your lives. But not only this, I want you to, to please to, to remember this. When God has dreams for you, through you, God wants to change the world. And that's why he's inviting you into a relationship. But let me tell you this. Satan, the enemy, is never going to let that happen very easily. And what he's going to continually tell you again and again is, you are not worth it. Remember where you came from. And every time you fall, he will tell you, this is who you are. Do you understand that? That's the way Satan works. Being here for many of you is being really in, in, a, in, in, in an oasis, you know, in a beautiful environment. But many of you here will find in your thoughts... One of the greatest battles. Because Satan is going to come and remind you where you are coming from. And he will tell you, and you are going back there again. And every time you come short, every time you make mistakes, he will remind you of that. I'm telling you that. Okay, because that's the way he works. But th through the story of Abraham, I want to show you that God is faithful and he never gives up on us. Amen. All right? So let's together dive into that. Let me share a little bit. Of, um, today's uh, title is very important. It says, The Journey Forges the Relationship. Why is that? What does that mean? You know, what, what that means really is the following. We believe and we love arriving at our destination. Isn't that right? I am very purpose-driven. Uh, I'm like, okay, I'm going to Virginia, to Harland. So I left around 7 a.m. And I said, okay, I'm only going to stop for gas. And I'm going to go there until I arrive. Okay? That's me. My wife is, wow, the mountains are beautiful. This is amazing. Wow, let's stop here. I said, no, no way. You know, like, uh, uh, when I travel with my wife, I know that I'm going to stop along the way, okay? And that she's going to see the beauty. I mean, you know, Rachel, okay? Uh, my wife is, wow, this is great. Did you see that? Did you see that? I'm like, look, I'm going to get there. <laughs> I'm going there. And why is that so important? Because that's our walk with God. In our walk with God, we get confused. And we think, okay, our goal is to get to heaven. Is that right? But what is heaven about? Jesus. <laughs> it's about Jesus, exactly. It's about Jesus. It's about knowing how to spend time with Him. So we are so concerned. I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to do anything wrong. I want to go where? To heaven. Heaven is about what? Jesus. Jesus. Heaven is about relationships. And if we don't understand that, we miss the whole point. The whole point is the journey, because it is the journey that forges the relationship. Never miss that. It is through the journey that we learn who God is. It is through the journey that we remember how He deals with us. And it is through history that we are reminded how God works with people. And this is so important. Okay, let me go uh, into one of the things. If you see in the next slide, you will see the. Okay, um, I don't know if you can see it clearly there, but you can see there a, a map 
of the journey, okay? The journey that Abraham takes. And here is very interesting because if you see in what today is Iraq, okay, that's where he starts. Abraham starts there and he goes all the way. And I want you to notice there. Where does Abraham travel? What is close to where Abraham is traveling? The rivers, is that right? So that means that there is a lot of life there. Yeah, there's a lot of life. So he's traveling along the rivers there, and he stops before, you know, he actually, before chapter 12, where does Abraham stop? In Haran. In Haran, that's right. So if you look at Haran, Haran is a pretty nice place. There's a lot of green, there's a lot of water around it. Do you need to go anywhere from there? Would you like to move from there? No. Let me tell you this. When I went to Weimar, and I was there, a place just like Harlan, you know, similar in many different ways. A beautiful environment, beautiful people, beautiful friendships. You know what my greatest challenge was? To go out. Because it was like going out where? To the real world. Do you understand that? I had great friends. You know, my, I, like, I, I tell people, and, and they don't believe, you know, like Saturday afternoon, hey, what are you going to do? I'm reading Patriarchs and Prophets. You know, what are you going to do? Steps to Christ. And you, Desire of Ages. <laughs> you know, those are kind of the activities Saturday afternoon. Where I was coming from, it wasn't like that. <laughs> it was not like that. And I, was, I knew that when I left that place, it was not going to be like that. The options were not going to be Patriarchs and Prophets, Desire of Ages of Great Controversy. Okay? The options were going to be very, very different. They were going to challenge my faith. They were going to challenge everything that I believed. And you know what? It was uncomfortable to think of leaving that place. It is comfortable to be in places where people think like you, where people worship like you, where people love God like you do. But just remember, this is a training place. You're going out. You're going out. Because God has called you to come here to his oasis to be prepared to go into the world and make a difference for Christ. Amen. That's the key. And it's not easy, but in Abraham's case, you know, we, we can see from there he had to move. And, and I have a friend of mine. He's, he's my great friend uh, at AFM where I worked. And... I'm not sure, I, I'm not able to, to make this work. So you can just move it to the next slide if you can there. Thank you. Um, something that I want to point out to you is the following. The, the people who live in the desert, there are several things that are important for us so that we can understand what Abraham went through. Okay? The first thing about them is that they believe in a... Oops. Is, is, uh, okay, great. First thing, they believe in what? Help me out. A supreme but distant God. Yeah? My friend is from Jordan, and he was sharing with me the way people live in the desert. You know, he's, he's amazing. This guy, he says, you know, Ricardo, I come from the tribe of Ruth. I'm a Moabite. Yeah? From Jordan. Our people have lived in this place for centuries, for millennia, all right? So let me share a little bit why things happen the way they do where we are coming from. And he said, first, the idea is that there is a supreme but distant God. Next one. There is a close universe, okay? What else? The desert where they live is what? It's harsh. And not only in harsh, but it's also what? Barren. Yeah? In addition to that, you have a lot of goods or limited goods. So when you have limited goods, what, what are you starting to think? Yeah, exactly. So you start to think, okay, so if here there is not water for everyone. Remember when Abraham and Lot had to separate? There is not grass for everyone. There are limited goods. And limited goods make you think carefully. Okay, so who is going to get it? Me or him? What is going to happen? Next one, thank you, you can see it there, is what? 
is a survival mentality. Yeah? You learn to survive. So in order to deal with that, what do they do? In order to do that, what is the solution? The solution is... Next. <laughs> the tribe. You depend on the tribe. If you are going to survive, you depend on your people. And today, it's fascinating, when you travel to different parts of the world, the same thinking exists. And today in sociology, you know, many people talk about what? What is your tribe? Isn't that right? Yeah, even in cities. What is your tribe? You know, where is the people that think like you, that, that have the same values that you do? Well, in, in the desert, that's it. If you are going to survive, it's because of your tribe. Not only that, but you need what? Interdependence. If you are going to survive, you need to learn how to give something in order to receive something. Okay? Because you know that one day you are going to need your neighbor. All right? Interdependence. What else? Protection. Back off. Okay? Um, <laughs> so people get together to fight common enemies. Yeah, you see it. It's fascinating when, when Lot, you know, gets... Um, attacked, and then Abraham gets all his, the kings that live around him, remember, to go and rescue him? It's that idea. You depend on the people around you. And then finally, you are dependent on what? On a network of relationships. It's fascinating. In many places, you, uh, the saying goes, it is not what you know, it is who you know. Isn't that right? Yeah? In most parts of the world, it's like that. Hey, do you know somebody there? Do you know somebody in the ministry? I'm not getting the signature. Can you please help me? You know, that's the way it goes. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, all right? Yeah, my friend said, hey, I went to get my, my authorization paper, and they were not giving it to me. I called my cousin. And he said, hey, do you know that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my cousin came with me. We went to the ministry. They were not doing my visa. When the guy who had told me I cannot do anything saw me, he did like he, if he had never saw, seen me before, you know. <laughs> he greeted my cousin. In five minutes, I had the paper done. All right? Yeah, and, and you can relate to that, right? In many places of the world, it's like that. Am I speaking yeah, the truth or not? Yeah? Hey, do you know something? That, that's the reality. Now, the fascinating thing about the whole thing is this. This is the world in which Abraham grew up. Question for you. What does God ask him to do? Live. <laughs> Live everything that gives you comfort. Give everything that you are used to. Give everything that gives you the idea that you are in control. And I'm going to take you to a place where I'm going to shape you. I'm going to reveal who I am. And I'm going to make you a blessing for humanity. When we are comfortable, we don't need God. When you have your family to take care of you, do you need God? The moments that we are closest to God is when we have challenges. I remember when I left my home. I was 18. It was my first time leaving home. I, I, I'm going to tell you, in Ecuador, you know, uh, my parents told me, your job is to study. That, that's, that's the way it is you know, in, in Latin America. Okay? So in Latin America, you don't work, like, like here in the States when you're young. I don't know. I mean, it depends. I, I, at least in the reality that I grew up is, your work is to study. So I studied. I got good grades. I, you know? I came to the States. And in the States, what do you do? You work. <laughs> you work. So my friends used to tell me, hey, are you rich? You're not working. What is that? And I said, no. I'm like, you know, teach me. So this guy, you know, my great friend, Jeff Shank. Jeff Shank. I will never forget this guy. Great friend. He said, hey, come. I'll teach you. And he told me how life works here in the States. Hey, we're going to work. And I started to work. I'm telling you, I was working 25 hours a week. And during the break, I was, I was working 60 hours a week. Yeah? So I was working. I learned to work. And I appreciated that. But my parents, yeah, my dad, he honestly confessed to me several years later, uh, a few months after I had arrived in the States, they were concerned for me. They said, hey, son, you know, like, I, I have to confess this for you. 
I did not know if you were going to make it. You know, like. <laughs> so he came and he said, hey, if you want, you can, you can come home. You know, that he came in a very nice way. You can come home. I said, no, Dad, I'm fine. I'm, I'm good here. But I'm telling you, I, I cried many times. It was hard. It was hard. But that's the place where God made me who I am. You have to abandon what gives you comfort. You have to be left in amazing need so that God can do his work. And this is the key in the story of Abraham. It's beautiful. In the story of Abraham, God calls him, and he does one thing. He believes. He believes in a God that he has not yet fully come to know. But he believes in a God that is going to reveal himself more and more as the story goes. Let me tell you this. To become what God has created you to be takes time. Okay? God will not do it in one year. Are you happy with where you are today? Just wait. Just wait. Chapter 12 of Genesis. God calls him and says, look, I'm going to leave your country so that you have no support. And I'm going to teach you that I am all that you need. And I'm going to bless you. And I'm going to make you a blessing. And all the people of the world will be blessed through you. That's the promise, isn't that right? A few verses later, what do you find Abraham doing? Huh? In Egypt, is that right? My sister. Uh, my sister, that's right. My sister. Yeah. So the one who is called to be a blessing, what does Pharaoh say? What have you done to us? The one who is called to be a blessing is what? Bring in? Curse. Curse, trouble. Does God give up? No. He doesn't. How old was he? 75, is that right? Yeah, 75, all right? You're much younger than that. It's easier when we are younger. It is harder when we are older. It is harder when we are older. God never gave up on Abraham. He continued. Yeah, if you see the chapters, I'm telling you, at the time, I have so many dreams of what I wanted to share with you, and I see that clock. <laughs> All right, I think I'm too ambitious, you know, I want to cover too much. <laughs> but this is the key, I want to leave with you, okay? Go to the story. Go to every chapter you see. Chapter 13, chapter 14, chapter 15, God appears again, and he makes a covenant. Remember? Yeah? Remember in the covenant, I mean, Abraham is concerned, hey, God, you have promised me that I'm going to be the father of a multitude, but you know what? I have no children yet. What does God say? Prepare these animals, is that right? Cut them. God walks through them. And he says, I am going to do what I have promised. It's okay. And then he prophesies. But you know what? Your descendants will suffer. But at the end, I'll be faithful. Because through you, I'm going to bless all the nations. Chapter 16, what happens? Sarah comes and says, look, I'm getting old. This is not working. <laughs> I don't know how God is going to do it. Let's help God. Here is Hagar. Okay, and they complicated things. But it's amazing. I just want you to read the whole thing. I love Genesis, all right? In, 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 the, in the chapter you, in 16, you find that in spite of the mistakes that Sarah and Abraham make, what does God do with Hagar and Ishmael? Bless them. Blesses them. Blesses them. He said, you know, I'm going to have, you are going to have 12 princes from him. There was something about Abraham that whatever he came out of him because of the touch of God was what? Blessing. A blessing. It's amazing. Continues, chapter 18, you all, you know, and then uh, towards the end, almost when he's 100, 99, he is. He says, okay, finally, you know what? You're going to have a son with your wife. 
and she will be the mother of many. Keep this in mind. God is faithful through it all. God is faithful through it all. You are here with a purpose. Everything will be need, needed to be taken away from you. You will, be, you, you will need to be stripped from everything that gives you confidence and trust. You will need to be reconstructed to the point where you can trust fully in God. And the promise is this. You will be blessed and you will be a blessing. But don't forget that the relationship is forged in the journey. Let us pray. Father God, each person who is here is coming from a past, a life that you know and they know. Through the experience, you are going to be shaping them, each one of them, because you have a special purpose and a plan for each one of their lives. The enemy also has a plan and a purpose, which is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came so that each one of the students who is here may have life and may experience that life abundantly. O oh Lord, through their time here, through the experiences they are going to be going through here at this place, shape them into the people, into the men and women that you have created them to be. I pray that they will be reminded when they fall, when they make mistakes, when the enemy comes and accuses them, that you have not left them, not forsaken them, that you have a purpose for them, and that it will take the rest of their lives to become what you created them to be. May their faith in you continue to grow. May their relationship with you continue to strengthen. Bless them and make them a blessing. I pray in the name of Jesus. God is a God that never gives up on us. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Thank you, Pastor. I want to thank you all. Thank all of those who also joined us online for joining. Um, as you join in, please let us know where you're watching from. I know this morning we had someone watching from Austria, so that's really nice. Be sure to share, like, and comment. Um, share with your friends and family so that they may also be blessed. Um, yeah. Join us again tomorrow. Thank you.